The first talk is, uh, as you see, Understanding Modern Storage APIs, the Systematic Study of Bion, SVDK, and IURI. And the speaker here is the Diego Dadona from I'm Research Zurich. Um, he is a research staff member at the Zurich Lab of Audio Research Europe, and he works on storage, machine learning, uh, and optimized performance of the app. You can start. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hi. So I'm going to present uh, this work, this joint work between the IBM Research Storage Lab and uh, IBM HTV from the EU Amsterdam. And what we do in our paper is that we present the first systematic study, study of the three most important storage APIs that are available for Linux nowadays. These are uh, Libio, Intel SBDK, and uh, Urine. And what we do is we compare the performance of these three uh, sort of GPIs and provide uh, insights on the performance dynamics that they exhibit with the ultimate goal of providing some guidelines for the users to, you know, to get the best performance out of these APIs, but also for developers to come up with even better designs for storage APIs. So this was mostly an experimental paper. So let's, let's see a little bit uh, about uh, these uh, storage APIs that we, that we compared before presenting the results that we got. So the first uh, API I'm going to present is it's Libio. This is the standard uh, Linux storage API. Most likely if you're running uh, any application on Linux that is uh, doing uh, I.O. I, I don't know what file system is using uh, Lib Libio. Uh, Libio is very portable. Uh, it provides asynchronous I.O. for Linux. It supports POSIX files and file systems with POSIX, POSIX compliant and works with a wide array of storage devices. Of course, it's not all good. It also has its drawbacks. Uh, first of all, the asynchronous I.O. only works for direct access uh, I.O. So if you actually use buffered access, you'll end up using a blocky version of Lib.io. But the main limitation is really performance-wise. So Lib.io uh, uses one system call to submit uh, an I.O. request to the kernel and uses one system call to retrieve uh, an I.O. when it's completed from the kernel. And it relies on interrupts to be notified when the uh, I.O. request has been uh, completed. The second uh, API I'm going to talk about is Intel SPDK. It is basically the de facto standard for high performance uh, when it comes uh, to storage in Linux. SPDK uh, implements a completely user-space storage stack. It's tightly coupled with the application. It embraces a pole-driven approach, so there are no interrupts to, you know, uh, to complete requests. And it doesn't even incur any system call overhead, because everything is in user space. And of course, it's not all good also in this case, because uh, uh, SPDK has a pace at all in terms of portability. It's the it's the fault driver, only it's full pole driver only works with NVMe devices, so it doesn't work with anything that works with, uh, for example, with uh, Libio. And uh, again, out of the box, it doesn't support uh, file, file system, so it's not POSIX compliant, but it has very good performance. The last API I'm going to talk about is Ayuring. This is actually the latest addition within the Linux kernel. It's uh, it's integrated and supported in since I think uh, 5.1 in the Linux kernel, and it really tries you know to get the best of the two worlds, portability wise and performance wise. So Ayuring provides asynchronous I/O for Linux kernel, uh, both for buffer and unbuffered uh, access. It supports a wide array of uh, storage devices. And it's process compliant, so you can use it both with uh, block devices and with files and file systems. It also enables zero copy IOs, so the overhead there is very low, and it also supports uh, polling based zero system call IO operations. So it seems by looking at this, you know, this nice uh, green thumbs up that uh, IO Uring already combines the best of two worlds. It's very portable and it provides the good features of a PDK performance wise. What we find out in this paper, in this study, is it actually it's not quite the case. Because in IO Uring, this polling based approach and the zero system call approach are not the default. They have to be enabled by the user through system flags when IO Uring is, is initialized. And the application has to be built around these uh, configuration flags. So if you enable one, your application has to be aware of that and take advantage of that. And what we see in our study is that actually the combination of these flags that you can enable and how the application revolves around the combinations of these uh, designs that, 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 that result lead to very nuanced uh, application uh, performance behaviors that, to the best of my knowledge, have not been discussed so far. 
So to understand how these flags, uh, you know, interplay with the design of IUring, I'm going to discuss the three variants of IUring that we're going to uh, discuss, that we're going to, uh, you know, investigate. But first, let's take a look at the general architecture of IUring because this is the architecture that's used by the, the, the three variants that we consider. So basically, uh, the most important feature of IUring is that it uses two rings, a submission ring and a completion ring. These rings are shared between the application and the kernel. Uh, this means that the application can access these rings without issuing any system call, just by using atomic operations. Okay? Don't mind the interrupt here, this is, this is typo. Uh, so this is the most important thing for, for IU ring. Now let's see the three variants. The first variant is the default one, that we call IOU, simple. Uh, this is what you get if you don't specify any flag for IU ring. And what IU ring does, it uses one system call to submit uh, I.O. to the kernel, mostly to notify the kernel that there is something in the submission queue, and it uses one system call to retrieve the, uh, the, the completion the notification of the I.O. And this uses interrupt. So the main benefit with respect to LibIO that uses a similar scheme is that it has uh, less overhead in terms of, of, of data copy. The second uh, variant that we consider, that we refer to I.O.U. plus P.E., it's very similar to the previous one, but instead of using interrupts to be notified about the completion of an IO request, it uses polling. So completely continuously poll the driver, the drive to understand when the, 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 the request has been completed. And the third uh, variant that we call IOU plus K is the most complex, is the most innovative, if you wish. Uh, is um, In this variant, every single IOU ring instance, basically every single process that uses IUring spawns an additional kernel thread. This kernel thread is, is responsible for polling the submission queue so that the kernel knows whenever the application has submitted a new IU request. And also this polling thread calls the drive to understand when the completion of an IO uh, is done. Also the application does polling on the completion queue, on the completion rate actually. So what, it, what this means is that for each uh, process that uses IUring, there is one application thread, one kernel thread, and they both do polling. So there are no system calls, no interrupt. Very similar to what SPDK does. So now that we have seen what we consider, let's let's take a look at the experimental study, starting with a test bed. We use a machine with 20 cores and 20 uh, enterprise grade NVMe drives. To compare the three different APIs, we use the FIO workload generator. And the reason is very simple. It is, to the best of our knowledge, the only benchmarking tool that supports LibIO, SPDK, and IUring with all the variants of IUring. As a matter of fact, the developer of IUring is also the developer of FIO, so uh, we are lucky there. Uh, we use the drives as block storage devices, so no file systems in the middle, both because SPDK does not support files by default and because we don't want to get uh, interference from the performance dynamics of our systems at this stage. And we use direct IO because we do not want to see the effect of operating system cache. We just want to see the, the behavior of APIs with direct access. And finally, we run a read-only workload, random access read-only workload, the reliability of uh, 4K, because uh, without drives, uh, read-only workloads are the ones that achieve the highest throughput. And this allows us to uh, study the behavior of these APIs under high load. So the first thing we are interested in, of course, is which is the API that achieves the highest throughput. And we run the very basic test. It's the baseline throughput that you get when you deploy these uh, APIs meaning one FIO job, so one process, one drive, so this process reads only from one drive, and one core. So this is the one core performance that you get. And be careful, when we mean one core, we actually mean it, meaning that we disable the other 19 cores in the system. So actually the whole system runs on one core. This is something that is not done always when you see one core results over the internet. They run one process, but the system still has all the cores available to do other stuff. Instead, in this study, we only use one core. And uh, we study what is the IOPS that we get from the uh, from the APIs. So on the Oasis, we have the IOPS higher is better. Why we change the queue depth? That is the number of implied IO operations. This is the uh, IO parallelism that is you know driven by the application. And this is what we see, right? Expectably, uh, SPDK is the best, and then we have a mix of some IOUing and uh, LibIO is basically the worst usually, except for this. IUring plus K, surprisingly for us, has very bad performance, like one order of one order of magnitude worse than the other ones. 
despite being the version of IURI that has zero copy, no interrupt, and no system calls. So we were expecting this to be the most similar actually to SPDK. And this is also surprising because if you look at results posted online, this is the version that is used of IURI when they post new results for IURI showing the gains that IURI has in terms of throughput. So of course we wanted to understand why there is this result and the dichotomy with, with respect to what we see online. And what we did, uh, we profiled the code to see what is the allocation between user space and kernel space for IURI plus K and the median latency as, as, uh, as we change the Q depth of the application. What we see is that the CPU allocation is 50% steady for kernel and for user, regardless of the QDEF, and also the media latency is 8 milliseconds steady, the, uh, regardless of the QDEF. This is very surprising because it means that the QDEF really doesn't play any role in, in determining what is the throughput and the latency and the performance of, of, of the system. So what is really happening is that having only one core, the kernel thread that does polling and the user cap, the, the user thread does polling within FIO, they compete for the single uh, core. And since they are doing polling without yielding the CPU, they basically starve each other. So what you get is that when, when, when someone is running, it's waiting for the other one to produce I.O. and vice versa. And then we get that the dominant performance factor here is just this interleaving that, that takes place on the single core. So actually to measure uh, these, let's say, reasonable results for I.O. and plus K, what we had to do is to enable another core. So now that we enable two cores for the system, we see that IURI plus K in purple gets very close to what SPDK can give within 10-15% depending on, on the on the QDEF. And this is very, very reassuring for us at least uh, to see this 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 result, uh, the main result. What we do next is we take a closer look uh, at comparison between IO uh, plus K versus uh, SPDK. This is what I chose to present to you because IU plus uh, IU plus K versus SPDK is the most interesting since they have the highest performance. But in the paper, we also, of course, have a, a comparison between the other two versions of IU uh, Uring and a comparison of Uring versus Libio. So the question that uh, I want to address with you today is why is SPDK better than IOU plus K, regardless of the fact that they both basically embrace the same approach? Zero copy, polling base, no system call. And to answer the question, we don't only look at throughput, we also look at latency now. On the x-axis, we have the throughput achieved by the, uh, by the API in kilo operations per second, so more to the right is better. On the y-axis, we have the median latency, uh, so uh, lower is better. What we see is that at low level, the two are at low load, so low throughput, the two are kind of similar. This is because they have the same design, but the low load, at a higher load, we have that the latency of SPDK is, is lower, and actually SPDK also gets uh, to higher level, uh, higher throughput levels. And this is because actually SPDK has a lower overhead compared with uh, IURIN plus K. IURIN plus K still has this interplay between kernel and user, and uh, there are these rings that are shared between kernel and user space, and the access to these uh, rings is uh, through atomic operations, and of course these atomic operations have a cost in terms you know, uh, of CP cycles, and they also have a cost in terms of a cash pollution. So for example, we measure that the cash miss rate at the same level of throughput for uh, SPDK is 0.6%, while for IUR in plus K is 5%. So there is one order of magnitude more overhead for cash misses. And this justifies why the latency is actually higher at some point, and why the maximum throughput that is achieved by IUR in plus K is lower. The next thing we look at is scalability. So far, we run only with one process, even uh, either with one core or two cores, but only one FIU process. Let's see what happens when we scale from one to 20 jobs, 20 processes for FIU. 20 is the maximum we can have because we have 20 cores. Each job is allocated to one drive, so it only reads from one drive. And in this experiment, we enable all 20 cores. So if you have a machine with 20 cores, and, and, and we see how the performance scale when we enable more, uh, more drives and more uh, uh, FIU threads. The Q depth is get fixed at 128, so the highest that we consider because we are interested in seeing what is the maximum throughput uh, for a different uh, scalability level. The plot I'm going to describe is we have on the x-axis the number of drives, meaning the number of jobs, because there's one job, one FIO job to drive, and on the y-axis there is the, the uh, operations per second achieved by the uh, API, so higher is better. Please note that in this study, for IUU plus K, there is one kernel portal thread for each FIO job. It's not only one, there's one for each. So this means that each FIO job actually responds to threads, one for the application of FIO and one for this extra uh, kernel thread. So let's see what happens when we have up to 10 jobs 
meaning up to 10 tries. In this condition, since we have only up to 10 FIU process, it means that in total we have at most 20 uh, threads also for IU ring plus K. 10 for the FIU jobs and 10 for the uh, extra kernel thread. So this means that even in the worst case of 10, there is always at least one extra product available to accommodate this extra kernel thread that IU during plus K uh, spawns. And in fact, as we can see, the, the, the plot is pretty uneventful, right? SPDK is always the best, the second best is IU during plus K, and then the other ones, and everything scales pretty pretty well, we, can, we could say. What's interesting is that when we enable up to 20 cores, uh, now we have less than two cores available for the total number of, uh, IO, for, of FIO jobs that we spawn. For example, with 12 jobs, with IO during plus K, what happens is that we have 12 uh, FIO processes and 12 kernel thread, kernel polar thread. And again, they start competing for the CPUs that are uh, only 20 available in the system. And this uh, leads to performance degradation, eventually performance crashing. And what happens is that eventually uh, IO during plus K it's not the second best approach, but actually becomes the worst approach that you can possibly have on your system. And the second best becomes either, I mean, uh, one of the other two combinations of IU of while uh, Rebio is still, is still the worst in terms of, of performance. So time to draw some conclusion. What did we learn doing this, this study? Uh, it might seem a simple study, but it gave us some, some insights on, on, uh, you know, on what's going on with these search APIs. The first thing we learned is that not all polling methods are created evil. We compare three very different, yet very similar, if you wish, uh, polling implementation. IU Uring plus uh, P, where we have the uh, polling for, uh, for the completion. IU Uring plus K, where we have polling everywhere, but in kernel, in kernel space and in user space with this additional kernel thread. And SPDK polling, that is completely user space. Uh, very uh, tightly coupled with the application. What we learned is that polling is indeed the key ingredient to get the best performance out of these storage APIs, even more than uh, reducing the number of system calls. This is surprising. We have some extra numbers in the paper. I encourage you to look at them, where we actually show that reducing the number of system calls doesn't necessarily imply that your system is going to be faster and, have, uh, and will have a higher throughput. So uh, the polling is the key ingredient to good performance, but also can be the reason for orders of money to performance loss. This is what we saw with IU ring plus K. The second thing we learned is that scalability warrants very, very careful consideration. So with these storage APIs, scalability is not only a matter of how many drives you have, how many CPUs you have, but it's a matter of what API you use, how you configure your, uh, your API, uh, how you, you, you tune it, how you write your application around it, and it also depends on the ratio between, for example, the core drives and the processes that you have. So it's more complex and more nuanced than one would expect. The third lesson is actually a good one, good news. It's that IU during is closing the gap with respect to SPDK. This is great news given all the efforts that we put uh, towards building uh, IU during. We think these efforts uh, are being fruits. Uh, these, of course, with the caveat, the system has to be tuned properly. The API has to be chosen carefully and tuned carefully with respect to your workload, your application, and the ratio, for example, of course and, and drives that you have in the system. So pay attention, but IURIN can be great. <laughs> so the last slide to conclude, uh, some future work in research direction. So what we plan to see uh, to continue this experimental study is to measure end-to-end -end performance with different uh, IO APIs. So far, we have only used FIO, that is a very low level market benchmark, to stress the dynamics of the, of, the, of the API. But of course, there are more complex systems like databases that are storage intensive. We want to see, for example, whether the synchronization overhead that are very important for the systems dwarf the overhead of uh, the storage APIs. So we want to see how much, how important are the overheads of the storage APIs when it really comes to real applications. The one interesting research direction in our opinion is to understand and find the optimized schemes to obtain the best out of, out of the IOU plus K uh, approach. It is the one that, that is the most promising. For example, uh, one could think about sharing the polar thread, the kernel polar thread among several uh, application threads to amortize you know, the cost of having this extra thread. And actually, this is supported by uh, 
uh, are using already. It's just that you have to write your, your application with this in mind. Or, for example, another uh, research area could be find improved scheduling mechanism uh, between the application and these kernel threads so that they don't start each other. And finally, IO Uring also works with uh, IO over sockets. So it would be interesting uh, to see what are the performance benefits of using IO Uring for uh, you know, network application as well. This concludes the talk. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. See any performance again for uh, not using uh, interrupts for using polyamine on the completion? Have you tried and uh, are you doing uh, K with the interrupts uh, just, uh, instead of uh, completion polyamine? So this is an excellent question. So we haven't, uh, mostly because out of simplicity, we were confident enough that since the uh, the developer of IO is the same developer of IO Uring. If he brought the application in a way to you know, use polling, that would be the most beneficial for performance. Indeed, it is if you have enough force. Uh, we have, I have some results here to show what happens when you have uh, interrupts when, versus when you don't have interrupts. For example, here we compare IO Uring plus P that uses polling versus IO Uring normal that uses interrupt to complete. And you see that eventually the throughput is the same, but the latency is not. So what we think is that even if you run a urine plus K, but with the polling instead of the, uh, with the interrupt instead of the polling at, at the application level, you will still see this gap for, uh, uh, in latency. Maybe not in throughput, the throughput might be kind of similar, but the latency would be, would be higher. Okay, and then one other question. Was your results uh, hardware independent? Uh, did you try on different uh, CPU? So we tried a subset of the tests uh, on uh, different uh, CPUs and different drives. Uh, the numbers, of course, change. What doesn't change is the behavior of uh, IURIN plus K when you have one, one core. We always get uh, this, basically, this, this behavior. And using Linux, curious enough, we always get the same latency, even if the CPU is different and uh, the drive is different. So this is really something to do about has, has something to do about uh, you know scheduling within uh, within the Linux kernel. No. There was there was a very interesting paper yesterday about the importance of parameters for different drives. Right? Uh, the try like when different drives and that's uh, very different parameters. You figure if you combine that working to yours, it might somehow significantly affect the results. You somehow tuned in, you know, various parameters into the specific drive you're using. Okay. Maybe you would have different results for the library. So for the drives, we didn't change anything. Uh, but for uh, for the application, FIO supports uh, different parameters in terms of batching and in terms of when to submit a new request. So how how many re outstanding requests you can complete before starting filling the queue again. We we have tried changing those parameters. The results are different. Uh, what I can tell you is, for example, that Libio gets a much, much better performance if you have uh, batching enabled. In, in all these results, we use the default configuration. So you submit IOs one, uh, one by one, you retrieve them one, 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 one by one. Once you start doing batching, late latency increases, uh, throughput increases, and, uh, and the performance gap maybe narrows if you only look at maximum throughput, but then you still get all these nuanced performance dynamics. Those are a constant. Some of the x86 machines have cores of different strengths in the same CPU. If you don't look, I don't know decide what decides which one to use for what. Uh, well, this is, all, this is an excellent, <laughs> excellent insight. We haven't tried it, no, but, but this, this could be one research direction if you have cores with different frequency you can boost uh, one specific uh, functionality of the storage API stack to get everything faster. Yes, this is absolutely possible. Yes. So it's a well-known configuration. So 
uh, we can allocate the kernel polar threads specific course, but when you have fewer cores than threads, you still have to collocate something. We did try to collocate the, the, the polar threads when we are when we don't have enough cores to support you know a one-to-one -one mapping, and still we, we were getting bad performance because the two kernel threads are going to compete for resources, or even if you collocate the uh, application threads, they're going to use polling with a urine plus k, and they're still going to compete for resources and still going to you know have distraction behavior eventually. Sorry, but, but if you try to allocate the kernel poll and the user space all on the same, uh, on, on, uh, sorry, kernel thread and the, and the user space thread on the same core? Yes. Like, so the, the, I mean, this is, this, is, this is what you get when you have one core. No, they no, are no, the same core. When, when you have several cores. Yes, we did. Because, because that, that, that at least uh, the caching, uh, <coughs> it should be kind of uh, improved. Maybe the, yes, I don't have the numbers for the caching, but it still happens that if you have 20 cores and 20 IO urine plus K, you still have 40 threads. These 40 threads are just following. And even if you collocate the application thread and the kernel thread one by one, and, and you collocate, uh, you pack them together to, on, on one core, again, you have this behavior just 20 times faster because they are basically independent. But still, you get that on each within each core, the application allocated to that core and the kernel thread allocated to the core, they're going to share 50-50 the, the core starting each other, just like we see here. Uh, this is a default uh, Linux kernel, I think, 5.4. It's pretty vanilla. Uh, OK, then one last question. I don't know whether anyone really looked into this and whether it makes sense, but it does make sense to share the polling and to have one, one core poll for different things. Yeah, it's here. Sharing kernel polar threads amongst kernel threads. Ah, okay. This is indeed supported in a URI, but you have to enable it. You have to write your application knowing this and around it. It has to be multi-threaded. And of course, then, depending on the workload, you have to understand how many polar threads, how many polar threads for the kernel you want to allocate to the application. So again, we end up in the in, in the realm of tuning parameters for the application. So yes, it, it's it's possible. It's a very interesting research I to, you know. Uh, self-tune the are in design to get the best performance for a given application. Absolutely. All right. Let's thank the speaker.